myself, Richard, Earth Healing. We have a continuation of our series on how to, and we're talking to Tim uh, Hall, who is here in Ravenna, Kentucky, in the mountains, uh, and we're going to talk about how to celebrate wildlife through art. Now, a lot of people would say, well, go out and just look at the wildlife and see them from a distance. But that's not the celebrating it as much as to show the detail of it. Wouldn't you say so, Tim? Well, uh, I'm a bird watcher, you know, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the birds and uh, animals don't always cooperate. They, they'll move on you and stuff. I know. And so, uh, at an early age, I started uh, trying to preserve. And, uh, okay. Uh, and that's what got you started in doing is. artwork. It really is. I, uh, I uh, always appreciate the birds and flowers and everything, and uh, uh, photograph uh, them and, uh, and start to carve and, and paint. So you were a carver early on, or did you pick that up later? I actually was painting first. Oh, were you? Uh, and yeah. then I started carving when I was in um, my mid-twenties, you know, kind of okay. uh, necessity. Started as a hobby, and then turned into a business. One. But you were a carpenter or something. I so was a carpenter. I, I made a living as a carpenter until the um, interest rates were up really high, and we got out of work. And uh, uh, this uh, was a just a hobby, and uh, uh, the, I always try to get across the fact that you know the Lord made a way for me to make a living. You know, I would have never dreamed of it. You know, I could sit here in this old shop and make a living, but I done it for 34 years now. So Is that right? You make a living out of the art yourself? It's that's very, you're art. very rare to be an artist who is making a living out of art. Well, very blessed. That's why all we, everything I do, I put on the bottom of it, uh, made by Tim Hall with God's help. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's on everything I like that. card. Yeah. Well, Tim, uh, I see something emerging there. Uh, and uh, you have realistic artwork, both flowers and birds, and there is a bird coming out of a block of wood. That's that's uh, shows the progression of the work. I start with a square block of wood, and I draw a pattern on the top and one on the side. Then I cut that outline out with a bandsaw, and that gives me two dimensions. Then I start to round that down. I use a draw knife, belonged an old tool belonged to my grandfather. I round that, this out, get the, the overall shape, then I sand that smooth and draw a feather pattern on, and then I relief carve those feathers, and then sand those, then I come back with a real fine line wood burner, and each one of those little lines are... Each line is burnt, and uh, that would have to be seen uh, in particular, but that's astounding, but it gives you that sense of a feather there. It does, it gives it the texture, and then I paint over that with oil paint, and when you get to this stage, you just hold this part and pull here and just pull the rest of the bird out. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. But anyway, <laughs> you are creating, and the art of creating makes you feel like you're part of God's creature that's doing something very special, aren't you? I've, yeah. I've really been blessed, you know. Yeah. Well, you know what's so great about it, then when you sell this piece of art, other people will have it close at hand, and it won't be just a taxonomy of a little bit of a, a shriveled bird, but it's uh, right. it's a full-sized animal. And uh, well, tell me something about how do you get your dimensions? You remember uh, Audubon, uh, who used to paint a lot of great pictures, but he would shoot the bird first. Right. You don't shoot birds, do you? Well, I, I use a lot. There are a lot of reference uh, books out there. You can find a book for uh, just about anything. I've had uh, commissions to do like an Atlantic puffin. Well, there's an Atlantic puffin book out there, mm -hmm. and uh, of course the internet has really helped on that. You can. Uh, uh, research uh, different species on that. Um, there are books that have dimensions, you know, sizes. So they tell you the size of an adult or... Right. Uh, premature. Oh, uh, good. Some of them will have the, the size of the, of the bills or something and you can kind of uh, scale everything from that, you know. Mm -hmm. I used to use the graphs and, and everything. Now, now you have copiers that can um, expand or, or uh, contract an image yeah. and get it the right size. 
Well, that's great. Now, when people see these, don't they admire them to a great degree? Is how well, did you do this? That is uh, part of the satisfaction of my work. You know, uh, uh, Thoreau said uh, he pitied the man that worked only for money, oh. and uh, so I, uh, the people appreciating the things and wanting them in their home, uh, that's uh, great satisfaction to me. It's far better than have a moose head or something like that from a real booth, isn't it? Well, you know, there's a, um, I do, I do hunt, you know, we, uh, we enjoy eating, eating the wild meat and, uh, uh, a lot of people don't understand that, but it's just like in Kentucky here, uh, the fish and wildlife people, uh, the people that buy hunting and fishing license, they're the ones that pay to introduce peregrine falcons into Kentucky and, uh, take care of the eagle, so so they're really a steward. And if it's done correctly, it's a correct, it's a conservation movement, and it, they're the one who really takes care of our wildlife. And they they do a lot of work on non-game species too, trying to make sure that they're taken care of. Well, that's good. Uh, of course, we're overwhelmed by both the turkeys, and they're eating up all of our uh, ginseng. And uh, also, we're, uh, we have just had our tulips being eaten up by uh, this very uh, week uh, from the deer that are up on the hills, and people are feeding them. And uh, what do you think of all that, too? Uh, it puts us close to these wild animals, but at the same time, they can become nuisances, and we need to have some fresh meat that uh, is well, locally grown right. and uh, organic. It's a balance, you know, and uh, my wife and I uh, both, we really enjoy the wild meat. No, it's, uh, you know, free range, and there's, yeah, no, uh, there's no hormones no, or anything put in it. Nothing out of really it at all. It. I wish you would take a few more of our local deer <laughs> out because they're really overwhelming us. But anyway, uh, th but you want people to appreciate uh, wildlife in some fashion in which they can do it themselves. Or what, That's true. Uh, people, you know, uh, if, it, if it's just photographing them, watching them, carving them, uh, painting, drawing, and I always tell people, you know, uh, uh, they think, well, I don't have the talent or anything like that, and I, I really believe that uh, most people can would surprise themselves if they just put the time into it. Mm. I've been blessed to have the have the time to put into it. And when people look at my work, they say, oh, I couldn't do that. And I say, well, you may, you may could if you wanted to commit the time to it, you know. Okay. Because the first things I did, of course, I hide. They were pretty crude. Yeah. So, um, uh, you, you know. You learned the art. Your art wasn't from an artist teaching you. You learned it on your own. I, that's true. Self, I pretty much self-taught. You know, there are, there are books on carving, and but there's nothing like uh, the experience. And uh, I've been blessed to do that. You know, if you're doing something uh, as a hobby, you get to do it a little while in the evening or something like that. If you do something every day, day in day out, even if you're dumb as a cold bucket, you'll learn a few things. You, know? you uh, you become experienced <laughs> right. in a real way. And do you have a deeper appreciation? of wildlife by working with it in this fashion? Oh, I think so. You know, uh, like I said, I've been doing this for 34 years, and uh, uh, I was watching birds and wildlife way before then all my life, and uh, I still have, a, I guess, a kind of a childlike fascination mm -hmm. with what I see out there. You know, right. I'm continually fascinated by it, and it's uh, uh, something I just really appreciate. And when you're carving and you know colors and things like that, you get a lot more when you see an animal than a lot of other people do who don't know the intricate detail that you have uh, been involved with. Right. The more, the more uh, uh, you know, uh, the more study you do, the better your work will be. You know. We have a lot of mockingbirds. Have you ever done a mockingbird? I, I have not done a mockingbird. They have a lot of character, you know. Um, they're always jumping in somersaults and everything on the highest they peak do. that we have here. Uh, I thought maybe you would have done a mockingbird. Well, you know, um, although th this is my, you know, I, lo I love all the birds and everything, but uh, this is my living, you know, so mm -hmm. I have to do, uh, try to keep things in the realm of what people want. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a collection of my own work. 
Mm -hmm. People think that's funny, but I, I, I don't. I don't have a collection. Oh, you don't even have a uh, recording of it, huh? Well, point. I have photographs of everything. Okay. You know, but but, um, but you sell, and that's part of your life. It's my living, so I have pretty much have to. Yeah. Do you reproduce the same thing? I think you're working on what you call the Montezuma uh, quail. Well, uh, uh, have you done that before? Is I, it I have. Um, I, I do. I do um, reproduce uh, the same species uh, a lot of times, mm -hmm. but of course, everyone's different. You know, each one of these is hand done. Mm -hmm. um, I may start out with the same pattern, but. What is the wood that you use? That is a uh, basswood. Uh, basswood. Some people call it a uh, uh, linden tree. Yeah. Uh, and you, you find that wood is easy to work with. Huh? Very, very much so, and it it takes its burning detail real well. Oh, that, okay. That's uh, uh, one of the good qualities of it, mm -hmm. and it's uh, pretty fairly yeah. soft to work. Yeah, that's wonderful. But you also do flowers. And that's an amazing thing. We will show a few pictures of those okay. at the end, uh, but uh, that's astounding. How did you go from birds to flowers? Well, uh, as um, we were talking about, you know, when I was younger, my uh, uh, my sister really got interested in wildflowers, and we mm -hmm. started going out, and uh, she did, photographing them, and uh, I would go with her, and uh, I just got interested in them, and uh, th just the uniqueness of them. And it's just like a treasure hidden mm -hmm. out there in the woods. Mm -hmm. And when you get focused on looking for something like that, the mm -hmm. more you look, the more you find. And they're mm -hmm. just, uh, they're just like treasures hidden. But out there. Uh, they're also they're very precious because they only remain about one week before the the full fo uh, foliage comes on the trees, and therefore you have a very short time to capture that precious uh, flower. That, that's true, and, and they're very fragile environmentally. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's really scary. Mm -hmm. uh, people that don't really appreciate what's out there, just like I do uh, pink lady slipper a lot, which is a wild orchid that mm -hmm. grows in Kentucky, has a very, very specific habitat requirement. Mm -hmm. has to be in pine trees. Mm -hmm. And um, people uh, uh, we'll dig them up and try to move them. That kind well, of the thing. Kentucky orchid is being hurt by off-road vehicles too. Certainly, and uh, uh, you know uh, one uh, one thing that happened uh, a while back, which was a natural um, phenomenon, was a pine bark beetle yeah. uh, came in and, and killed a lot of the pine trees. And there's a place where I used to go every spring kind of a pilgrimage to, mm -hmm. to, to look at these lady slippers uh -huh. and after those pine trees died uh -huh. the lady slippers you had none, none to gone. do it <laughs> have you done any carvings on lady slippers i have done pink and yellow lady slippers oh my goodness mm -hmm. we will show that very uh, soon but isn't it a lot harder to do flowers than it is birds they are harder uh because they are so delicate yeah uh, i've done a few pieces that um, I did a uh, mountain laurel, mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, you you broke a lot of those pieces before oh. you got the. But they're all made with wood. They are, uh, for the most part. The the lady slippers are 100% wood. On some of the things that have a real fine stem, you put... I'll use some metal uh, okay. just to make them practical. You know. I see. And so you don't use silk or something like that. Oh no, no, they're they're wood, and I use a, I I have you am using some tupelo now on some of the flowers. It's a okay. little more forgiving about uh, as far as breaking. I see. Like that. I see. Good. Well, you have a tremendous uh, hobby, or you call it a life envir uh, employment, it is. And, which is amazing. Uh, would you have a few things to say to those who are budding in this direction of making a living on themselves and they don't have to depend on somebody else for it? Well, number one, have an understanding spouse. <laughs> that's you know, important. Uh, if you uh, start to do something that's a little bit off the grid, uh, people a lot, a lot of times, are, if they don't understand something, they fear it or, and or, or don't appreciate it, you know. They'll make life tough for the person who's trying. Right, yeah. and it's not a you know it's not a easy easy life. It's a it's a rewarding you know, but you don't have it. You're on your own. Mm 
-hmm. You know, there are no uh, no nets as far as uh, uh, benefits or insurance or anything like that. And plus, if you're self-employed, you have to pay higher taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, if you can find the niche, you know, uh, it is a reward. So you also have to promote your product. That's true. You've got to go out. Uh, either do you sell it th from here or do you go to shows and expositions? Well, uh, you know, uh, Eastern Kentucky is a great place to live, uh, but it's not exactly the land of opportunity. So uh, I do have to do a lot of travel. You know, I go to, to Chicago. Uh, I used to go to Connecticut a lot. Uh, you do have to go places where uh, people appreciate this kind of work, plus they have the uh, discretionary funds to purchase it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's something that uh, not, I do sell a few pieces here. You know, I have some have some clients here. Okay, well, tell me, how long will it take you to make this Montezuma quail? That's that probably uh, yeah, will represent about a week's work. Really, uh, a week's uh, work. Uh, yeah, because these these lines, you know, I'll I'll burn on this all day, and uh, probably take me all day to finish getting the burning on there, and then then I have to make some wigs. No, that's that'll take another day probably. Well, what do you, what do you uh, charge for a piece like this? Um, the quail right now I'm getting uh, eight hundred and fifty dollars. You know, that's a uh, that's uh, like I say about a week's work. Wow. Uh, that is a beautiful piece of work when it's finished, I'm sure, because people would have to see that up close as to how he's burned this and actually turned those into looking just like a feather. I if I can show you that. Uh, right. Turn this on. Okay, he's turned on and he's actually going to do an actual burn at this very moment. Oh, you have to have deft hands, I'll tell you. You couldn't. You couldn't be as shaky as I am, that's for sure. <laughs> or you have a very jagged looking weather feather. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And at the end it will be an actual feathery looking and feeling uh, bird here. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, Tim. And um, we're going to then, uh, if you allow us to come to your inside your house and actually take some photos of the uh, of some of the flowers that you have. Sure. We would fine. love to see some of them there. And uh, we wish you the best on your quail here, and that it will come to be successfully sold. <laughs> That's what you're intending with these things. And uh, it really tells us a lot about your celebration of wildlife. You, you came, you started wanting to be outdoors in nature and then you pulled in in order to uh, have a production that others can enjoy and appreciate. That's true. And it's a big piece of art. God bless you. Take up, keep up the good work. Thank this you, is Al Fritz from Earth Healing. We've been talking to Tim Hall, uh, who is in Ravenna, Kentucky, uh, a celebrated artist of wildlife.